TU100, My Digital Life, Sense and Sense Ability. In the previous exercise, you experimented with the square drawing program you created in Programming Exercise 2. Now you're going to resume development of that program. The script is getting quite long, especially because of those repeated move and turn blocks. There's a shorter way of doing the same thing, using a loop a programming construct used to repeat instructions in a program a number of times. Loops are a very powerful tool in Sense and in programming generally. So this is a brief introduction to loops. You will learn more detail about them in exercise 5. This is just a taster to enable you to write an interesting program that you will develop in subsequent exercises. First we're going to amend the square drawing program so that it uses a loop. Open the Project 4 file which contains the completed program from Programming Exercise 2. Immediately save this as Project underscore 04 underscore SOL. Click and hold down the left mouse button on the topmost move block, then drag it away from the script into a clear area of the scripting pane and let go. You've disassembled your script. If you now run your program, you don't get a square because the move and turn blocks are not executed. Go to the control palette, choose this repeat block and attach it to the end of your script. That's immediately below the pen down block. This repeat block has a different shape from the other blocks that you've used. It has jaws between which other blocks can be inserted. As you might expect from the name, the repeat block causes a repeated execution of any blocks placed within its jaws. The textual representation of this block looks like this. The square brackets as usual denote an input box and the curly brackets is a new textual element and denotes the fact that the block has jaws into which other blocks can be dropped. Place this move block into the jaws of the repeat block and make sure its input value is set to 55. Follow this with a turn block with its input value set to 90, like this. Or you could left click on the bottom most move block in the stack of spare blocks in the scripting pane and with it drag the turn block below it into the repeat blocks jaws. Each time you insert a new block the repeat blocks jaws expand to accommodate it. Change the value of the input box of the repeat block to 4. Your entire script should now look like this. Remove the detached blocks from the scripting pane. Remember you can do this by dragging the blocks from the scripting pane back into any palette or by right clicking on the topmost of the unwanted blocks and selecting delete. Save your project and run the program. You've now drawn a square but used many fewer blocks than before. Rerun your program, first in slow motion and then single stepping through it. Watch the blocks being highlighted as they're executed to see the effect of the repeat block. Now you understand how loops can be used to carry out repetitive actions, have a go at completing this challenge. Can you make a program that draws a hexagon? To make life easier, you could just change some of the values in the square drawing program. What parts of the square drawing program will need changing? Don't forget to save before you make any changes and give the new program a new name. The pointer will need to turn 60 degrees at the end of each side and it will obviously have six sides. You might even like to go on to make several programs, drawing a pentagon, an octagon or an equilateral triangle. The next video in this series will introduce the concept of nesting in programs. You don't need to have completed these additional shape drawing programs to be able to tackle this, but I do hope you take the time to have a go at the challenge, as this will help you to doubly ensure that you can use the repeat block effectively. How about telling other students about your experiences with this challenge in the Region 5 Sense Forum? Bye for now and see you in the next video.